hello friends this is dinesh your host i am the admin of indian temples and i feel very glad to be speaking to you uh, through this live today is a very special day for us first thing is that we have uh, completed 75000 followers today that's a landmark that we have achieved today and it uh, gives me great pleasure to uh, inform you that second thing we have a very special guest with us who will be speaking about goa beyond beaches most of us have visited goa for different purposes of course and uh, we know goa is a land of beaches and land of booze but uh, there are certain people who are actually trying to promote goa beyond beaches and booze there is a lot of cultural heritage associated with the state of goa and uh, many researchers are doing great work in uh, bringing this culture bringing this uh, heritage in front of uh, the people and one of those researchers who are doing great work there is savni shete malik so welcome savni hi thank you thank you dinesh yeah. to have me uh, on indian temple and uh, i'm honored that you are doing it on the occasion of your page commemorating i mean completing 75000 uh, followers congratulations to you on that thank thank you thank you very much friends to introduce uh, savni to you she is an archaeologist by education uh, and she has a spe specialization in ancient india history and culture she is currently pursuing her phd in history uh, from university of goa she has presented various research papers on the kavi art of goa and karnataka she is trying to change goa's image uh, beyond beaches and booze and reveal its true story to native as well as tourist savni is ma making use of her academic background for uh, this purpose she has uh, she has launched various uh, various heritage tours to explore the real goa through its temples archaeological remains and local culture uh, especially providing some experiences such as festivals and folk performances she had the privilege to work on various documentaries on the history of goa with department of information and publicity government of goa she has also been part of many talks and outreach programs in the history and heritage field uh, through the government as well as private organizations and she is also a uh, visiting faculty to various uh, institutes and goa colleges in goa so it uh, provides me great pleasure to have savni here thank you yeah yeah uh, to provide some uh, reference to why i thought of organizing this lecture or why i thought that uh, this topic should be discussed i visited goa in uh, the month of july th this year uh, before that uh, one of our co admins madhu had visited goa and she informed me about uh, tambri surla temple uh, present in goa earlier i did not know anything about uh, cultural heritage or monuments in goa that was the first time and even i was very surprised that there are some monuments uh, present in goa so when i visited goa in july i uh, made sure to visit uh, various monuments including the famous tambri surla temple and then i realized there could be many people like me who do not know much about monuments in goa who do not know about uh, the cultural heritage of goa and so i thought maybe i, I can use this uh, in indian temple page to promote the heritage and culture of goa so sauni first of all i would like to know from you about uh, the history of goa and uh, the its monuments uh, okay. and in fact even be even before we start with that topic uh, you are currently live from the page exclamations goa oh right so uh, i wanted to know about this project as well exclamation goa what exactly is the project about okay so uh, both the questions are interlinked so basically a lot of people know about goa as the tourist and no doubt on that it's on one of the top list of anybody's bucket list to do in goa or anybody who is from abroad visiting india you know so goa will always top their bucket list so um it is known for its beaches the nightlife and the you know relaxation destination and all that but for us the locals goa is much beyond that so we have a unique culture that goes much beyond the portuguese time so uh, portuguese came to goa in the year 1510 in the 16th century and they did not control the whole of goa for the next 200 years they only had the three uh, talukas of goa uh, what is what you know as salsat uh, tiswadi and bardev so the rest of goa beyond that was uh, 
under lokesh local desai at one point of time under adirsha and uh, another point of time uh, under chatrapati shivaji maharaj and sambhaji maharaj and followed by all the others uh, you know chatrapati who continued after that so uh, goa also has a rich history that way uh, which dates back to ancient times of stone age uh, we have sites which are prehistoric what we know as of stone age uh, sites uh, they are rock uh, rock art on the river banks uh, we do not know the exact uh, you know time period but it is it should be around 6 to 8000 years ago after that okay. we have a tribal culture of goa uh, which uh, you know it is thriving even till today it was an agrarian society worshiping the nature in and around them so mostly Uh, they worship the rivers the trees the fertile land what we call as mother earth and uh, they also uh, had their harvest festivals which are celebrated even till today which we call as shigmo uh, so after that we have civilizational period here like settlements of culture including temples rules of trades the dynasties started settling up uh, they had their land grants they had their battles and their uh, administration so we were part of the uh, bhoja empire uh is not to be mistaken with the bhoja empire of madhya pradesh then we were part of the chalukya empire from badami uh, we were also part of the shilaharas and then the kadamba so kadamba was the golden age of goa we have many temples the temple that you mentioned just some time ago tamri surla temple was built during the period of kadambas so kadambas were also okay. in karnataka and goa after that we were part of the vijayanagar empire uh, which ruled from hampi so we have lot of temples rebuilt uh, in goa during vijayanagar empire so everybody wanted goa to be part of their empire because of the port so the gopakpatnam port yeah. from goa uh, they traded from goa to other uh, places such as uh, you know places in europe uh from goa to gujarat and many other places in even arab stated uh, with goa so everybody wanted goa to be part of their empire so after the vijayanagar we have the islamic period uh, partly in goa uh, we have um, the bahamanis for some time after that we have adil shah and then came the portuguese so that's a huge uh, timeline of history of goa um uh, but unfortunately people have limited goa only to extension of what portuguese you know they were here and it was everything the history of goa does not start with portuguese there are many years before them uh, where goans existed uh, we have that that culture also the pre portuguese culture thriving even till today so exclamations goa is a company that uh, i'm part of it's a venture that takes pride in showing the real side of goa the true side of goa including festivals local culture uh, we arrange heritage tours on sundays on uh, you know in any other occasions which are meant for tourists as well as the locals so which focuses on authentic information and actual experiences the raw form of experiences with the locals yeah it's very interesting the what the great work you are doing under exclamations goa when i visited goa i wasn't uh, aware of this company otherwise i would have uh, definitely uh, booked a tour with you and uh, have a, um, i i would have explored goa along with you but definitely there is always next time uh, for those who are uh, watching this live friends exclamation goa is a company that shows you the true colors of goa true culture of goa uh, through their uh, guided tours and uh, that's a really great way to explore goa with uh, with the uh, with local help so definitely whenever you are planning to go uh, visit goa next i definitely uh, i would definitely request you to go visit this page exclamation goa contact them and uh, try try to communicate with them uh, about your plans so uh, you mentioned that goa has a long history even i, I have read it uh, read about uh, the history of kadambas or how uh, marathas have ruled all over the place and how they have saved much of goa Uh, from the portuguese attacks how vijayanagar uh, empire also tried to build some temples in the goa and how there is an influence of uh, vijayanagar in the goa place but there is a very common question that uh, even i am asked many times 
that if there were so many monuments in goa if there was uh, so much culture in goa why don't we see these these temples today what's the reason okay uh, so when portuguese came to goa they had this rule so initially they uh, didn't have plans of ruling over goa they were in india for trade they came to cochin which is in kerala and goa was under adil shah so people from goa uh, who didn't want adil shah's rule they uh, invited the portuguese and asked them to help them in the battle to defeat the adil shah so when portuguese came to goa they realized this is much important and much better than kochi because from goa uh, from business perspective it was much easier to travel to other places like deccan from where you had places like python you had places like uh, uh, you know uh, ports in mumbai then even you could go easily to gujarat compared to from kochi you could have easy access to karnataka which was a place for good silk and sandalwood which the portuguese wanted to trade so then they decided uh, just trade will not help you will need to have your political control so they came they fought along the locals and uh, you know almost killed the same people who invited them and they took over the uh, the areas so uh, they you know they realized just having administrative control will not be okay because after a point of time people will revolt against and uh, you know take over their empire so they started having a complete psychological control which could be only done through eliminating their original culture so they had a law which the uh, religion of the ch- king can be the only religion that could be practiced in the empi- uh, empire so the religion of the king was the uh, catholic religion roman catholic religion so the jesuit priest who uh, had come here on the uh, they had this only uh, what you call as mission that to convert as many people to christianity so to, they started converting people so some pe- the, they started with simple thing what we call as sam sam and sam dam danda bhed so the first thing was uh, they started inviting people to you know uh, convert to their religion so some must have converted easily second was those who would not convert could not retain any property so after that people would convert but then in, inside of their house they would still practice their uh, original religion so because of which they started something called as goa inquisition which i would ask uh, everyone to look up on internet not much of that was spoken till few years ago but now you have enough content on internet as well uh, there's a book called uh, goa inquisition by ak priorker which gives and this is all mentioned by the portuguese themselves these are not the story which i am or somebody else is making up so the portuguese started destroying the culture they started destroying the temples because when you don't have a monument you will not have the memory to uh, go anywhere after one generation when the second generation comes you will uh, not know where to go right so it is like completely eliminating them from their original roots so they not only destroyed the monuments but anything that was sacred for the hindus including the temp- uh, okay. you know uh, trees or any sacred places of worship so including that okay. and portuguese mentioned this in the book uh, they wrote it down any area which temple was there when who uh, and when it was destroyed so lot of people from goa migrated to other places in goa itself which was uh, you know not under the rule place called ponda taluka in ponda taluka you see temples like mangesh santa durga marsa narayani nagesh these are all temples which is by 1 1 km distance so lot of people okay. ask why that you see temples only in ponda you know uh, people who uh, have visited goa uh, ha- you know most of the times they must have visited mangeshi and at least shankar at these two famous temples. so these temples are uh, you know since of 1 to 2 kilometers from each other this is because of the uh, reason that they all were migrated from their original locations because the portuguese destroyed the temples they didn't the lo- the devotees didn't want uh, the temple uh, the deity to be destroyed or you know they would either uh, there is an example of divar where divar is an il- name of an island where there is a shiva temple okay shivalinga was used as after people converted 
if they have really converted they should not have any feelings for their old religion so because of that they use the shiva linga shiva linga um at a place where all the dirt waste goes you know uh, well okay. next to the well so if you have really converted okay. it will not make any sense you know it will not matter to you you will not be bothered about it so uh, that is what they would do because of which people started migrating with the deities the murti or anything that they could take so they would leave their place during the night and uh, they would cross the river and go to the other other places so some went to other talukas in goa which included bicholi taluka pedne taluka konda even kankon some went in karnataka like in places like karwar yes. kanta uh, mangalore then uh, some people even went to kochi some went to maharashtra mm. like in sindhudurg wherever there was coastal area because the culture was same so after okay. a point people even went to areas like bombay or pune uh, people like sachin tendulkar deepika padukone vijay mallya they have their roots to goa they are in okay. kula daivat is from goa okay. so uh, the, their families migrated from goa to because they did not want to convert even my family who were originally in uh, porvarim from there they went to bicholim taluka because they did not want okay. the murti of the goddess to be you know misused or mistreated by the portuguese so they would okay. migrate during night like what you saw in kashmir files something similar happened in goa so portuguese did not leave a single mark of any old culture in the talukas the three talukas that i mentioned and whatever okay. uh, ruins were there in goa you get very heavy rainfall so temples were built with mud or laterite stone and wood so anything that actually were not destroyed by the portuguese what destroyed by time okay interesting very interesting uh, history and when i visited uh, goa i uh, definitely visited tamdi sulla temple that's probably the only temple from kadamba period that uh, survives even today <laughs> yeah so what was the reason that uh, that that particular temple survived so tamri surla survived if you uh, have noticed it's right it's not in the main land of goa you have to yeah. go from the city almost 2 to 3 hours of distance of travel time right and it is in the jungle so that is the first reason it was in the forest because it was on the ancient mm. route from the ghats after okay. a point trade from the ghats that would come by the bullock cart you know uh, moved to the sh- ship uh, you know the sea trade so because of which uh, lo- that uh, this area was not much used and the por- portuguese had not taken uh, you know this area can please so tell me so tamrisurla that was one reason it was in the forest and second and the main reason was portuguese took that area satri taluka much later so they okay. took it after 200 years of their coming to go so by that time okay. their religious dominance had decreased okay uh, that was the first reason and when they had it they had other issues to look after they had their own financial issues so that is the only reason they could not destroy it secondly it is okay. it is the only temple that was completely built in the black stone the basalt stone okay okay so uh, basalt stone is very difficult to destroy with nature time right you know you will see right. temples or caves in maharashtra karnataka where they have used basalt the black stone it doesn't really get destroyed with time that easily compared to uh, the laterite that we have in goa so laterite stone is very easy uh, to destroy because with time because trees can grow over it it's got holes on it, on it so with that okay. grow okay. and then trees will separate it then the mud wall okay. the wooden work will gets destroyed with the moisture so tamdi surla okay. is the temple built in completely ba- uh, basalt stone so it's basalt and mix of soap stone so because of which it survived the time and the second reason is portuguese reached there much later 200 years later so they didn't have the you know it didn't really matter to them at that point of time okay uh, there are some uh, feedbacks coming in uh, in the form of messages people mm-hmm. uh, many of them are ap- appreciating this session there is one particular question uh, that says uh, what if someone wants to visit goa and only visit the monuments is there a guided tour available or guided uh, some uh, information available somewhere on, online about all uh, the temples in goa 
ओके सो टेम्पल्स इन गोवा यू कैन ऑल्सो फाइंड ऑन इंस्टाग्राम इन डिफरेंट पेजेस एंड ऑल दैट यू कैन फाइंड ऑन गोवा टूरिज्म वेबसाइट सम वी ऑल्सो अरेंज लाइक फ्रॉम डिसेंबर ऑनवर्ड्स वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग आवर क्यूरेटेड टूअर्स बिकॉज वॉट हैपन्स इज ऑन अ सेम डे देर आर मेनी पीपल हु वॉन्ट टू डू टूअर विथ अस सो वॉट वी डू इज माई टीम वी हैव curated tours like on saturday this this is the tour which this, these are the places involved so you can sign up okay. once so it becomes economical for everyone right so we have a right. bus of 15 to 20 people visiting uh, on the same time or if any educational institution is coming or any group is big, huge group is coming uh, we try to you know conduct or specialized curated tour for them based on their interest sometimes we miss okay. out on ferries because uh, most of the times we are on field so as much as possible we try to conduct the tours okay uh we talked about tabdi sulla temple or uh, the oral history i i also noticed few of the jain monuments in goa so what is the history of jainism in goa okay um so goa uh, is actually a very small place it's a very it's one of the smallest state considering administratively uh so because of which but in uh, you don't have the huge area span yes so there yeah. was one question that uh, somebody asked uh, what is the connection of mangeshi temple and to ata mangeshkar so in goa we have this tradition of uh, in most places in maharashtra as well you have the village name uh, and kar as a suffix to that as your surname Yeah. So uh, Lata Mangeshkar family, her father Dinanath Mangeshkar, Master Dinanath Mangeshkar, they are from Mangeshi. Their roots are originally from Mangeshi village. The surname is Mangeshkar. Okay. So even Jitendra Abhisheki and Shauna Abhisheki, who are also classical singer, they are maestros in classical singing, uh, Hindustani classical. They are, they also come from the same Mangeshi. village okay uh, in fact uh, there are many more including uh, some muses of raja ravi verma they were also from goa so lot of indian classical singers actually had their roots including kishori tayamonkar who was known as gana saraswati yeah her roots are from goa okay there was another question in comment section that asked about uh, if there are any dance sculptures dance related sculptures in the temples of goa Okay. Uh, so basically, two reasons why we don't have so many sculptures. One is our stone is not black stone. Our stone is mostly the laterite. Okay. Uh, you can Google for laterite stone, and if you have been to Goa, uh, you will see most of our homes or forts are built using this stone. So that stone is very difficult to do any sort of a carving. Okay. So because of it got holes, right? You cannot show a face. so you cannot have uh, sculptures or uh, different murtis like you have in temples all over other places in india that is one reason secondly in wood uh, they have some sculptures but most of the temples that we have now were originally destroyed by the portuguese right, right. as i mentioned in the previous slide so after uh, they were destroyed in the year 1560 so just with the murti or any say like kalash or any of the wood or uh, they they could take they went from place a to place b so okay. when you go as a refugee uh, to any other place it will take you at least 100 to 200 years uh to rebuild something you know of your own in a grand way okay so when you rebuild but but meanwhile in that 200 years of instability you have lost a lot of uh, you know support system including the art style or you know the traditional rules or anything like that so be- because of that owing to this reason we don't have much of uh, following of indian uh, indian temple uh, style in the temples of goa okay. you have a uh, portuguese influence you have islamic influence you have the local influence so it's all a uh, sync between all this okay but it is commendable and very interesting that temples like mangeshi or santa durga kavre or marsa nairani came to the place that they are existing today 500 years ago as refugees okay they had nothing okay 
over a night they could with whatever they could pick with their hands they came with that crossed the river and rebuilt something as magnificent or as grand as what they are today okay and they do a lot of charity at the moment including schools which are run by the temple education the free food that is given and you know lot of the whole system that runs the economic system runs around it okay interesting uh, before uh, there was some technical problem uh, p- before that we were talking about uh, the jain monuments in goa and the history of jainism in goa yes. so uh, if you can continue the same that would be interesting yes so jain uh, uh jain and lot of gujaratis uh, came to goa for trade purpose okay. in the ancient time which is pre portuguese time so a lot of trader communities uh, settled in goa so we have the wards uh, the wadis as we call so they are called as gurjar wadi okay. or gujir wadi okay so gujir as in people from gujarat so wherever they settled uh, most of them must have been jain so they established uh, they are small temples but uh, because of the natural conditions and the condition of the stone that we have we don't have a uh, uh, temples that are as huge as what you would see as a jain temple in other places like uh, in uh, rajasthan and gujarat okay no uh... we talked about various monuments uh, present uh, in goa or that that were present but also talking about the culture overall culture or overall rituals there are many interesting rituals that are very unique to goa so uh, if, if you can lay some light on uh, those uh, various cultural rituals okay uh, so we have interesting uh, folk traditions in goa including the harvest festival so after you have harvested the surplus you the agrarian society would celebrate so okay. uh, when they would celebrate it is the time you have worked a lot for the whole year at the end of the harvest it is an agrarian cycle right you will celebrate as much so uh, okay part of which is like game then somebody goes in there are some uh, dances or festivals where people go in trance and uh, like what you would see in a uh, movie like kantara something similar yeah then we okay. have our uh, theater local theater which is of the shavtara so the men would act in the theater they would also do the role of uh, women as well the okay. men only would do the role of women okay and uh, they would uh, in this local theater the folk theater stories from uh, mahabharat or krishna leela or ramayan were uh, narrated to people okay so that is a uh, very interesting uh, ritual i think the similar ritual was shown in swades movie uh, is it similar to that in the movie swades there was uh, a song i think that is more of a ram leela okay uh, something similar to that okay but we have uh, only the men acting in it okay not the women okay so the role of women like if there is a story of mahabharat hmm? draupadi will also be a man okay interesting so he will wear a sari and dress up like a woman and he will act in it interesting i also uh, noticed some of the rathotsav uh, that goes around in goa i don't know what it is called locally but uh, the uh, idol of deity is placed in a chariot and it's uh, the chariot goes around yes. in the town yes so yes so uh, actually it doesn't go in a town like you, like what you would say see in jabinna okay in uh, some places yeah uh, it uh, does go in like one part of the town hmm. but otherwise they take a, a, a pradakshina to the temple okay so because of the terrain because you do not have a flat terrain right, right. we have hilly regions also. right right so it takes a the deity is seated in a ratha hmm. and it takes a round of the temple okay uh, talking about uh, talking about cultural rituals there was one particular uh, thing that really astonished me that i was really surprised because i uh, when i saw the uh, idol of uh, vetal that's not usually seen in other parts of country it's only uh, locally in maybe sindhudurg district of maharashtra or uh, belagavi district of karnataka that's the only part where uh, vetal is worshiped so what's what's the reason behind vetal uh, why, why is he worshiped in goa um, so this is a concept throughout india the concept of kshetra pala Okay. Kshetra is an area, Pal is a protector. 
So initially, okay. if someone who protects the area, protects the people of that area from any spirit or anything that they force it basically, so they are protected deeply. So the roots of Vrita is from Kaal Bhairava World Version. Uh, he is worshipped as an Aushwak Shiva, uh, as mm. of is one of the Shiva Ganas. Uh, and okay. for us, the you know the hyper masculine. He has to be because he has to fight with all the forces, right? So he right. is shown with you know uh, fangs, fangs as in the fist uh, that you know uh, that comes out from his jaws. Uh, he is shown bare bodied. You can literally mm. uh, see his skeleton. He is shown with uh, he is shown nude with okay. erected uh, genitals or something. Okay. And uh, what is was you know what is offered to this vetar is mm. he is usually on the boundaries. Most of the time, it's not in a temple like a built temple mm. because uh, it's, it's an open spirit, right? It's an open uh, deity. He, he has to be like that okay. to control the negative forces. But in some places, you have temples built of Veta. They will dress him up with silk, uh, dhoti, and everything. Okay. But the original uh, idea of Veta is he's supposed to be shown nude. Okay. And uh, people offer bidi, the mm. local bidi, the local cigar. Okay. Uh, Country liquor, hmm. uh, the masculine form of roti, which is a very thick roti called raw. Okay. Uh, and uh, any like chappal or something like that. Even a gongri, which is a blanket made for the uh, local, uh, you know, the agrarian society. Okay. So that is offered to Veta. Okay. So at some places uh, there is also worship of Kaal Bhairav. Which is also okay. a protector deity, and uh, there are rakhandar. So the concept is of a rakhandar. So rakhandar literally means a protector. Okay. So rakhand is to raksha. Yes. Uh, from there comes the word rakhand, hmm. and somebody who protects. Okay. So even though who converted to Catholicism, hmm. uh, they became Catholic, but they still worship the protector deity. Hmm. And instead of a roti, offering a thick roti, they offer bread. And instead of lighting a dia, mm. uh, which is a typical Hindu way of lighting uh, a lamp, right? Right. The origin dia, mm. they light a candle. Okay. This can be seen at a fort called as Rashol Fort. So at the at the uh, border of the fort, you mm. can see uh, you know this mark of where people come mostly on Wednesdays and Sundays and offer this and make a prayer. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a very interesting concept that you mentioned. Uh, in many temples of Goa or in many uh, churches of Goa, you will see mixture of uh, traditions from both the cultures. So probably this would be the reason that those who converted uh, also follow their own rituals in some way. They try to protect their own rituals in some uh, altered way, and that's why there are mixture of uh, both cultures at many places. So there was one question. So one interesting story yeah. to yes. So I'll just complete uh, as yeah. what you mentioned. Yeah. So Portuguese tried very hard to eliminate the local Indian culture from the Goans who were Hindus, mm -hmm. and from there they converted to Catholic. There were complete rules like uh, what you could eat. So you had to complete, uh, you know, you had to put salt in your rice. Okay. As simple as that, mm -hmm. because uh, rice with salt cannot be offered to God as prasad. You could not have a bath in the morning. Okay. So if you that was to break the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So a lot of culture is part of our uh, you know uh, cultural rules are part of our daily lifestyle. So that had to be broken. Secondly, you could not have a tulsi outside of your house because they were used to have a tulsi in the angan and worship it. So Portuguese made sure instead of tulsi you were supposed to erect a cross. Okay. So you will build a mandavan mm -hmm. and on top of that you have to remove the plant mm -hmm. and put up a cross. Okay. So only in Goa you will see small cross altars outside in the angan mm -hmm. and nowhere else even in the Europe. Okay. This was the reason. So, uh, but despite of all this, some some cultural elements or you know concepts survived, uh, and as even they converted, they followed this rule, like wearing of uh, bangle mm -hmm. one day before the marriage. Okay. So the new bride is given green bangle in most traditions in Deccan area. Yeah. So the Catholics of Goa, mm -hmm. they don't only give green bangles, but green, red, yellow, and white. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So they give all four, 
and uh, they wear a mangal sutra like haldi ceremony uh, what we have all over in india okay so here, uh, idea of haldi ceremony is to give a beauty treatment right right so instead of haldi they apply coconut milk okay so but that is done one day prior to the wedding okay so during the wedding uh, that this is even common in maharashtra where a girl is given a bal krishna a uh, krishna laddu gopal is what right. is called in right. north india so that is given to the bride when she goes to the husband's house so the catholic started giving a small infant jesus like a baby jesus okay which is something you will not see even in europe mm-hmm. so the roots of this come from the hindu tradition of giving of uh, the bride a bal krishna yeah interesting it's very really interesting to know how uh, small parts of our culture uh, gets embedded in your daily lives and then uh, when someone tries to change it or someone tries to alter it uh, to their own convenience how how all the things uh, just suddenly change it uh, even after change they most of them remain same in some other form it's really interesting uh, there was one particular question that uh, asked about uh, books books to study uh, go on culture or go on uh, temples monuments are there any books available uh there are many books available uh they could uh, for culture part they could re- uh, re- refer to something called kaleidoscopic goa so it's like a small encyclopedia of culture of goa okay there are many more books on freedom struggle and particular topics as such like there is a okay. huge coffee table book on ports of goa i could mm-hmm. do a separate post on that on exclamation goa so if anybody is following that i will do a post on books to read so go so there okay. too many books uh, to mention on over an instagram chat uh, no no problem you can you can create a post later on uh, the page and i will uh, share them in my story as well so that uh, all the followers of indian temples also get to know about the, uh, these particular books there was another question that asked if uh, we both are from different states yes i am from maharashtra and uh, savni is from uh, goa she, she uh, resides in goa yeah i think we have answered most of the questions that were coming from the audience as well <coughs> so savni uh, talking a little uh, taking a diversion from the topic of uh, goan culture and talking about uh, your life i noticed uh, i read in your profile that you are pursuing phd in uh, history and you are uh, pursuing your uh, phd from goa university uh, now so what exactly is the topic of your phd if you can share with our audience uh, so i am in the process of finalizing the topic i cleared the okay. edit my topic i have given the proposal so it is not been selected okay. yet so it's in the process okay. so maybe by the year end or something i will have my guide and topic confirmed Okay. I have given proposal, research proposals for three topics. Okay. So, but it will be something related to the pre-forged in Goa. Okay, that would definitely be interesting to know uh, when, when uh, your research paper will get published. That will be a very interesting read for everyone. I, I am very very sure about that. Also, uh, you. you are doing a you are doing a great work of promoting real culture of Goa, uh, Goa beyond beaches and uh, booze. You are promoting that uh, part. so how is the response how do people uh, react to this particular concept because many of us who visit goa are only for uh, only because the booze is cheaper there or only because there are a lot of casinos there uh, that that's uh, one of the uh, most important motive of, of visiting goa so how is the response from people how how do you see people taking this uh so firstly we started doing tours for the locals okay it was from the perspective of creating awareness mm-hmm. about their own backyards right so we got a huge response from local goans mm-hmm. some of our heritage walks and trails are attended by goans themselves so when they their guests come every goan have you know we feel sad when people limit us only like they think we have no job to do we are on the beach throughout the day and we only drink uh, instead of tea we drink beer in the morning <laughs> and we uh, sit at by the beach playing guitar and yeah. uh, apparently that's not what we do right, right. so lo- a lot of goans want to show the real side of goa to the guests they they are, they are coming to their houses or their offices so we started getting uh, you know tours like that 
there are a lot of state guests who come or, or writers you know a lot of people visit goa many times so they will visit almost every year or every six months so goa sort of uh, has a kind of tourism which has something or the other for everyone right from uh, from you know we are biodiversity hotspot also so somebody who is into bird watching somebody who is into culture somebody who is into adventure somebody who is into parties and things like that uh, even goa is a good place for all the yoga and things like that so uh, we have an offering for everyone okay so so far our response to all these tours has been great mm. because lot of people you know they see goa is only about the coastal side that they see right. so when they see something like this they are shocked that we never knew this right so we have got our response only through word of mouth we have not spent any amount on any advertising or paid advertising it is only through word of mouth that we have got response yeah so only last two years of covid were uh, we went on a back foot because mm. we could not take people to the villages right for obvious reasons the of you know not spreading the covid but during that time uh, exclamation go our works on many documentaries Uh, because of which uh, the the story of Goa could be narrated to many people through YouTube documentaries that we did for information and publicity department of Goa. Okay, interesting. Uh, friends, uh, when I started doing online interviews for my YouTube channel or for Instagram Live, there was one particular message that uh, came to my inbox and that uh, told me about uh, Sauni. Uh, it had only a link of one of her uh, videos that she has made, and uh, I, I received a message that uh, this girl is doing a great work in uh, promoting culture of Goa, and you should definitely interview her. After that, I tried a couple of times to get in touch with Saudi, but uh, uh, our time constraints or there were some technical issues because of which we could not uh, do this interview. When uh, in July I visited Goa, I had a personal interaction with Saudi, and uh, during that uh, small 15 to 20 minutes of interaction over a cup of tea. i realized uh, what great potential uh, sauni has and how much uh, passion she has for history and uh, the culture of goa and that passion was very clearly uh, evident on uh, on her face or uh, in in her words you know in her talks so uh, that that really uh, motivated me to uh, contact sauni again and uh, uh, ask her for an interview and i am very sure that those who are watching this interview have definitely gained lot of uh, new perspective about goa i i hope so uh, i will also be uh, pub- i will also be publishing this interview live uh, again on uh, instagram as well as on uh, youtube i will uh, i will be uh, adding exclamations goa as a collaborator for that uh, video on instagram and i i hope uh, exc- exclamations goa also get a lot of footfall uh, through this interview uh, many many people would come to know about exclamations goa i really hope so i am really hopeful for that and uh, there is one thing that uh, i am very sure of after this interview that uh, there would be at least some people who who would be very interested in looking at goa beyond the beaches and beyond the booths so uh, that that's what uh, i uh, really wanted to achieve through this interview and i am hopeful that we will be achieving that uh, definitely uh, thank you very much sauni for uh, giving us your valuable time it it is really a great pleasure to know you it's a great pleasure to have an interaction with you and i definitely look forward to a lot of more positive interactions uh, through online as well as uh, in personal meetings definitely i really look forward to meeting you again uh, very soon uh, thank you dinesh ji uh, it was my pleasure to be on part of uh, indian temple page and once again congratulations on having 75000 followers uh, i think this page is doing a lot of work and uh, with the, the kind of number of followers that you have i'm very sure that uh, this side of goa the actual true side of goa uh, it will reach out to many people in some way or the other maybe uh, some of them will be lucky to have to come to goa and explore it by themselves for those who cannot make it they can ex- experience or know about this from the comfort of their home so thank you so much for uh, having this and i'm uh, thankful for the publicity that exclamation goa uh, has benefited from this interview so i can see in some of the comment notifications here that people have already started following the page so thank you so much for that as well yeah uh, and i'm sure uh, maybe through us or through any other means lot of people will actually discover the real side of goa 
and at the same time it will help us uh, propagate the real identity and uh, also benefit the local people uh, of the hinterlands of goa so thank you so much for having me on this uh, instagram chat thank you thank you savli thank you very much for joining us